Welcome fellow developers to the only YouTube channel dedicated to learning the OutSystem platform. Sometimes as developer we have to show information inside of grids in the form of a table. OutSystem doesn't allow that uh, to happen with a grid but we can do it with a list. Fellow developers, if I could take a moment uh, with you and before we start our project, and if you could uh, please go ahead and comment on the video and let us know what you like or you didn't like about the video. Go ahead if you would and subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you think the video was useful. And now we continue with the project. Okay, today's um, development, we're going to create a, a grid inside of a list. And what we're going to try to do is to get a selection of all the states and display the people, the students, that those states are, uh, are part of their address. So the first thing we're going to do is go to this page that I created called List and Table. And um, let's see, I'm just going to go inside and I am going to add an aggregate. I am going to add the state aggregate that's going to be our main list that we're going to display. It's going to display all of the states. And next we're going to add another aggregate. And this aggregate is going to show the students that have that state as their address. So we're going to add the student table. And I am going to add an additional source and uh, we are going to use the state ID as our, um, as our link. There we go, state ID. In, in, in the case of Maryland, 21 and 21, it's state ID and the, the state ID in the, in the student uh, is also the same. So we know that that's good. So we are set up there, but I just want to display the ones that only have whatever state we choose. So, all right. Next, we are going to create a local variable. And this local variable is um, to display the, the state ID that we have selected. So, state ID selected. All right, and it is a, of a class that is uh, state identifier data type state identifier okay next we are going to add another variable and we're going to use this one to hide or display um, our table so we're going to call it display or hide table and this is going to be a boolean with a basic value of false as a default value all right, we got most of the parts in place. Now let's go and look at the page itself. And we are going to drag a, uh, a list. There we go. And we are going to point that list to the get states. And I don't like the way it's lining them up one below another. I want to make this kind of look like a, like what you would see if this had been a grid. So I'm going to make these uh, a little bit smaller so they all fit on one line. And a little, there we go. And boom. All right. Okay. So they all fit on one line. And now what I need, well, let's see. It. This should, we should have no errors at this point. It's usually good to go ahead and, and um, run the, uh, um, <clears throat> run it and make sure that everything works. And sure enough, the nemesis of my life, anonymous access. Oh, how I hate it. Okay, so we're going to say anonymous access. Yes. And all right, there we go. It should compile without an issue. And we should see the, the list. There we go. All right. Looks just like a, a data grid or, or what a data grid could look like. All right. Now I need a way to identify what row I am going to choose. So we'll come back here and I am going to add a button. 
We'll add a button. Oh, I hate the style class. What style classes do I have to work with? That's button primary. I don't like that one. Uh, let's see what else is there. Let me click on style classes. Uh, button large. No, I don't need that one. Yeah, what if I just remove this? Nope, still ugly. Okay, how about just button, BTN? Is there BTN default? Yes, there we go. Oops, what happened? That's not right. Oh, it still has the other class. BTN class. Perfect. All right, that's what I need. And I am going to name this button select or, or expand instead. There we go. Expand and I'm going to click on it and that gives us our client action. All right. We so far we're doing really, really well. We're moving right along. Uh, next, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to give it an if statement and I'll explain this in a minute. We need to figure out if we're going to expand or not expand. So our if statement is going to be based on our variable display hide or hide table. Boom, there we go. And we're going to say if it's false. If it's false, then I'm going to give it one assignment. And let me give another assignment here. OK, we're going to remove this link right there. Disconnect that. Connect one here and for true and one here for false. All right, and then we'll come back to the end. There we are. Okay, everything is connected. So this one, if it's false is true, then I'm going to switch that to, to true. So if the value is false, which is a true statement, then I'm going to assign true to it. And if the value is not false, which means that it's true, then I am going to assign a false value. What that means is when, when it's false, it'll flip it to true, which will display. And when it's initially true and it goes through the cycle, it'll flip it to false, which will hide what we're trying to do. Okay, so this will make it a little bit easier. Is display false? If it's if it's false and and if it's true, then our value is false. Then we're gonna say was true. We're gonna make it false, and this is going to hide. All right, I grab that. A little bit less typing. I'm going to bring it over here and stretch that a little bit out. That looks ugly, but we'll fix it in a minute. Okay. And I'm going to put here was false. And now we're going to make it true. And that means it's going to display. There we go. Okay, now let's let's grab some of this stuff here, move it around, make it make it a little bit nicer. Okay. All right, looks good. All right, let's go with it. Okay, if it's false. I'll hide if it's uh, if it's if it's false. I'll flip it to to true and it'll display. And if it's initially when it arrives true, I'll flip it to false and it will hide it. Okay, and now we're going to see if this works. And before we do that, we have to add something that will show or display. And for that, we are going to go up here to the widget tree because it makes it so much easier. And right below our last letter there uh, bold uh, we're going to add a container and this container is going to hold what we're going to show or display or show or hide 
So we'll call it show or hide container. Container. There we go. And now we need to change the visibility of the logic the, or the logics. Uh, yeah, the logic of the visibility. So we click on that and we're going to add an if statement. If our variable is false, no, if our variable is true, then true if it's otherwise false, which means if our variable is true, it's going to show a true value. If our variable is false, it's going to show a false value. Okay. If it's true, true, otherwise false. What that translates to, if it's visible, if it's true, it will be visible. Otherwise, it'll be false, which will not be visible. Okay, let's just put something here so that we can test our logic. Just put some letters, some random letters. There we go. Okay, and we compile it. And we need a little bit of extra logic there, and I'll show you what it, that is in a moment. But this will get us uh, at least to the testing phase. Okay, and we'll go to the interface, and we'll browse. And there we go. And if we click, boom, it shows our data. And if and we click it again, it'll hide it. Okay, so, but we, we have the problem, right, that it... Is showing it for everybody. So we only want to show it for that particular uh, particular row. So we're going to use this ID right here, which is the state ID, and we're going to say, uh, let me let me expand on this a little bit. Uh, we're going to essentially tell it that the logic that we have there and if the ID that we have chosen on the click event is also the ID of the row, then display, and only then. So we'll go to the expression editor, and we're going to come over here and add an and, and then our variable, LV state ID selected. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a little bit messed up here. Okay. If if I'll just grab it from here. There we go. If the the display is true and the current state ID is equal to what we have selected, then display. Otherwise, don't display. It's that simple. The current state ID, of course, is that number one that you're seeing there that changes uh, from location to location, from a state to state. Each one has a different ID. Okay, here we are going to move this a little bit further down, and we're going to bring our aggregates in. Well, first, let's do an assignment. We're going to uh, assign the, the LV state ID selected to the the current state ID that has been selected. There we go. All right, that's taken care of. And if we compile it, well, we don't really need to compile it, but, but okay, whatever. We'll compile it. There's really nothing to display yet because we haven't brought over the the um, the student table. The student aggregate, excuse me. Let's keep our terms correcting, correctly. All right, so now we are going to open a browser and we're going to click. And at least now you can see that only the, uh, the, the row that we choose opens up. Okay, so that fixes that problem. All right, now let's add our students. So, from here we are, from here we're going to go back, uh, hmm, several ways of doing this. Uh, we'll just grab the, the aggregates first, and 
I will refresh the aggregate list. And that aggregate is, uh, should work just fine. Let's get states. I don't think we need states, but I like refreshing the aggregates and it keeps it, in my mind, it keeps it straight. So we have our filter where let's add a filter and that filter is going to say the student ID to, it's going to be equal to our, uh, where's my variable? Okay, it's going to be equal to, there's my variable. There we go. Okay, that's taken care of. And look at that. I, from a previous test that I had done, I chose Maryland, which is uh, state code 21. And it returns two, uh, two students, which is what we want to see. So we know that that aggregate is working correctly. So we'll just uh, go on to the front page now. First, let's go ahead and compile it. Doesn't hurt anything and it and avoids any surprises that we may run into with uh, bad compile code. Okay, so we'll remove this uh, junk data that we that we had on there. We'll cut that out, and I am going to grab the uh, student aggregate. There we go, and I'm going to drag it inside of that container, our hide or display container. Now we're going to compile it once more. And uh, let's see what it does. All right, so if we go here and click, there's no students with that uh, state ID, so we know that. But we let's check out Maryland. We know that two should show up. Whoops, too fast. Okay, two, and there they are. So um, all right, that can that really pretty much concludes our uh, our example for today. And uh, you are able now to create a list and display uh, all sorts of uh, Im important data inside. Uh, in, in our case, we decided to show the students that were associated with the state. Thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you here again. Thank you for viewing this video, and if this video has been of use to you, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you right here again in Learning Out Systems.